Nine. Take your Bibles, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. We're going to kind of do something like a word study tonight, and I'm going to try my very hardest to make it not boring. <laughs> okay. Uh, because, you know, if you're, if you're studying out words or phrases, sometimes it could be a little bit on on the dull side and so i i want to be sharp all right so um i'll go quickly in this but what i want to say tonight is that uh as you turn over to first corinthians chapter six look at verse number 19 first corinthians six verse number 19 and uh you know sometimes when you read verses or you read scripture um kind of got to wonder exactly how they said what they said, you know? And um, when it says, what? No, you're not. You, you read it like that. You're like, what? No, you're not. But then it's got a question mark. So it's like, what? No, you're not. Or it's like, what? No, you're not. <laughs> I mean, how would they say, what? No, you're not. Or is it kind of like, what? No, you're not. That your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And so we don't have the... Um, the blessing of being there when it was said or how they said it. In fact, the Greek language, they don't have, there's not inflections, all right? Inflections, we have inflections in uh, the English language to signify that, you know, it's a question by raising our voice or raising our tone and things like that. They don't have that. Um, they have what's called fronting. But uh, anyway, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. And uh, I was thinking about this. I was kind of pondering it for the last couple of weeks. Then we went, to, um, we went to a seminar at Ganado Baptist Bible College, and uh, Brother Wrights was teaching on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And during that teaching, it really was not the main focus on it, but he made a statement uh, about this, um, this scriptural statement that occurs multiple times in the book of 1 Corinthians. And, and it comes up quite a few times in 1 Corinthians. And he said, um, what, know ye not, or know ye not? The apostle Paul used that phrase, know ye not, several times. And there was another phrase that he also used, and that was, I would not have you ignorant. And uh, so I would not have you ignorant is kind of like saying, hey, there's something that you really ought to know uh, from the Bible. It's going to help you in your Christian life. And you don't know it yet. You're ignorant of it. You need to know it. So here it is. And then there's know ye not or what know ye not uh you know know ye not and that's you know saying you should really already know this this is something that is either in the old testament it's something that's explained or it's just common sense or it's just something that uh you ought to know all right and you haven't got it but you need to know it and so what we're going to do is kind of contrast this, compare it, contrast it, and look at some verses that contain those phrases, I would not have you ignorant. And so uh, we have there that what know ye not your body is the temple. But I want you to now flip back to Romans chapter number one. And uh, we're going to look here at I would not have you ignorant. And uh, ignorant does not mean uh, dumb. It just means that you don't know. It, it's just that uh, you haven't learned it yet. So um, we're going to look here at Romans chapter 1, verse number 13. And this, this passage here really sets the tone for what I want to get across tonight. And, uh, and, and so we're going to look here at Romans chapter 1, verse 13 through 18. Romans 1, 13 through 18. It says, Now... I would not have you ignorant, brethren. Uh, he's talking to saved people. He says, I would not have you to be ignorant that oftentimes I purposed to come to you. He's talking to the Romans, and he's saying, I have purposed. I want you to know I purposed to come to you. Why? Because he, that, that I might have some fruit among you also. He's wanting to go and see people come to salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. He's wanting to go to Rome for that very purpose. Verse 14, I am debtor, both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. I want you to know, he's saying, I don't want you to be ignorant 
that I am a debtor. Verse 15, so as much as in me is, I am ready to preach. He wants them to know. He does not want them to be ignorant. He is ready to preach the gospel. And the reason why is verse 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So he wants them to know, do not be ignorant, that I want to come. I want to preach the gospel to you. I want you uh, to, uh, and people there in Rome to be saved. And I believe the Apostle Paul wanted all men to be saved. And, and he wanted everyone to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. And, and that's why he's, he would say things like, I have become all things to all men that I might by all means save some. And he wanted people to be saved. And so he, he goes on to tell them and make sure they know, verse 17, that the, therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith. Think about that. The righteousness of God is revealed from faith. Pre preposition from, you know, it, it points to faith. And that the righteousness of God comes by faith. Notice verse 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. And uh, so the righteousness of God does not come from, uh, you know, it, it doesn't come from experiences or visions or dreams. And, and uh, you know, it's not going to be written in the sky. The righteousness of God comes by faith in the word of God and the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done. And uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be revealed from heaven. And uh, one day there is going to uh, be the wrath of God upon sin and upon this world. And, and all of that is going to happen. Uh, but, you know, God wants us to know. God wants us to be aware and not be ignorant of, of his, his plan of, of what he's trying to accomplish in this world today. And that is that people come to salvation through Jesus Christ. And so he says through the, the mouth of the Apostle Paul that I would not have you to be ignorant, that I'm purposed and I'm a debtor and I am ready to preach the gospel that saves souls and uh, all who believe. And you need to know this. It's something that you need to know because we need to have that common goal as a Christian, that, that purpose as well. That the Apostle Paul had. Not just a, a missionary needs to have that purpose. A church needs to have that purpose. Every Christian needs to have the purpose. Of preaching and reaching people with the gospel. But if we are ignorant of that fact. We're, we're not going to do what God has uh, called us to do. 1 Corinthians 12 verse number 1. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 1. Here's the other instance uh, of... Uh, I would not have you ignorant. And so we're going to really, we're not going to go deep into this, but just want to say that it, it fits along with this. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away uh, unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give uh, you to understand. And so he's wanting Christians in Corinth, to understand that God has gifted us, every Christian, with gifts for the purpose of encouraging, building up, instructing, helping, serving, all, all of that for the purpose of reaching this world for Jesus Christ. And so if we're ignorant of that, we're going to be prohibited. We're going to be uh, kept from the great purpose of, of why God saved us, and that is uh, to be reaching this world with the gospel of Jesus Christ, if we're ignorant of that. And so God wants us to know. Notice uh, as we read on, he says, I give you understanding that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse. And we, we read that and we say, well, yeah, Duh, right? I mean, uh, there's, there's no one uh, who is speaking by the, the Spirit or the direction of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit of God who is going to call Jesus Christ accursed. Or, you know, in, in that, the, the word accursed there is, is talking about uh, you know, like how they said Jesus was speaking and, and doing all of his miracles and everything through the power of Satan. 
and attributing that. He's saying there's nobody that, that through the Spirit of God is going to do that. And so he goes on to say that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. And you say, well, yeah, right. You know, I mean, uh, that, that makes total sense. But what about people who, you know, they'll, they'll name the name of Christ, but they're truly not saved. But I think if we put ourselves in the situation of possibly uh, people in the first century where there's persecution, or maybe if we transported ourselves into the Middle East, or transported ourselves into a country that is hostile against, against Christianity, I don't think it'd be very advantageous for you to, to confess the name of Jesus Christ unless you were truly a Christian and you were prepared to die for your faith. And so while we don't truly understand what it means to uh, confess that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost, I think if we were in that setting, we would really understand that. We would really understand, like in, in the book of Romans, where it says to confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus and to believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, that we shall be saved. And so that, that confession really means something when there is a price to pay, when there is something uh, that, that we may lose because of it. And so it, the Christian life and the life that God has saved us to, well, often we, we think about the life that God has saved us from, and thank the Lord for that. God's grace is wonderful. But the life that God has saved us to is one of purpose, one where God has, has, is driving us to a goal of reaching this world for Jesus Christ. And there's so many things that if we don't know, if we're ignorant of, we're going to miss doing what God has called us to do. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse number 13. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13 through 18. And here is uh, the, the third uh, instance uh, of I would not have you ignorant. 1, Corinthians, or 1 Thessalonians excuse me, 4, verse number 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, those who have died, and uh, we're comforted by these words, and, and they were written to comfort us. Verse number 18 tells us that. But concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. And he goes on to tell us about the resurrection. And he goes on to tell us that they which are asleep in Christ shall be uh, uh, risen, and those who are alive and remain, we're, you know, we are going to be caught up. And uh, the caught up here is talking about the rapture talking about the coming of the Lord, the talking about when we see Christ. And I think if we miss that fact that Jesus Christ is coming again, that we may miss the fact that we, we need to be busy about the Father's business. Amen. That we need to be busy about reaching this world for Jesus Christ because the Lord's coming. And Jesus said that many times. He said, uh, you know, I, 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 go, I go to prepare a place for you, and, and I'm going to come again. If I come again, uh, you know, I pre I'm going to prepare a place. I'm going to do all these things. But then he says, uh, you know, if, and he gave him parables to talk about how a master would go away, and uh, the servants would be slumbering, and they would be messing around, and, you know, the master comes back, and, and all of that. And he, he tells them these stories to say, hey, you need to watch and be ready and watching and be ready is not putting on foam uh, or foil hats and standing on a hillside and and you know doing weird things uh, in anticipation of Jesus Christ coming he wants us truly to to believe that he's coming live in the fact that he's coming and it should influence us with this knowledge to be reaching the world for Jesus Christ and so he does not want us to be ignorant. It's something that we really, really need to know. Now, let's look at what know ye not. What know ye not? You should already know this. Let's look at Romans chapter 6, verse number 3. Turn over to Romans chapter 6, and this comes out of Romans 6 and 7. So Romans chapter 6, verse number 3 
And while you're finding that, turn over to Romans 7, verse number 1, and, and this will give us the context for the what know ye not or the know ye not, meaning you should already know this, okay? And if I can find Romans chapter 6, we'll read, okay? <laughs> Romans chapter 7, verse 1. Okay, notice there there's parentheses. You guys see that? Let's read what's in the parentheses. It says, for I speak to them that know the law. So who's he speaking to? Who are the people he's speaking to? Well, yeah, the Jews. He's speaking to people that know the Bible. They know their Bible, right? He's speaking to people that have the Bible, the Jews. They know the law. Okay, so with that context, now let's go back to chapter 6, verse 3 says, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Now he's talking about our, our life in Jesus Christ, that the old man was crucified with Christ, that the old man is now dead to sin, and that the new man is alive in Jesus, that we were buried with him in baptism, picturing our death with Christ, and our death to sin, and then we are now raised to walk in newness of life. So he's talking about that and saying, don't you understand? Haven't you, uh, haven't you comprehended this, that we need to have a new life in Jesus Christ? We're called to a new life in Jesus Christ. And so this old, this old man, the flesh, needs to die. The flesh needs to be uh, crucified daily. And uh, that, that's what he's saying. So that we might be made free from sin. So that we might uh, be able to serve God uh, in our spirit. Now, verse number 16. Verse number 16, he says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So now he's talking about really and giving us the key to having victory in Jesus. I love the song, amen? Don't you love the song, Victory in Jesus? Well, now he's telling us how to have victory in Jesus. He's saying we need to yield ourselves unto Jesus Christ, who is our master Instead of yielding ourselves unto sin, we need to reckon, as the Bible says here in verse 11, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. And that reckoning ourselves, that means believing, that means counting it as being true, just like we believe that Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again. We believe that we were are dead with him and that we are now alive through the Spirit of God in Jesus Christ. So by yielding ourselves unto Him, that God, He has given us power through His Spirit to do those things which would please Him. This is not a work of the flesh. This is not something that we do in the flesh. We cannot have victory in the flesh. We can only have victory through the Spirit. Okay. All right, I'm bogging down here, but uh, let's go on to 7.1. Know ye not, brethren, Romans 7.1, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. And so here he's, he's talking about things that, that we ought to know, and he gives these instances here of the law of marriage and, you know, how that, until death, till death do you part, and, uh, and just saying you're free from the law when there is death, and drawing that conclusion uh, uh, from that, and showing us that because there is newness of life in Jesus Christ, that we're called to that new life. The old man is dead. The old man is gone. 2 Corinthians 5 says that we have uh, been transformed or metamorphosis into a new life through salvation, through Jesus Christ. So we're not to be this old man. We're not to be that 
what we were, we're to be a new creature in Jesus Christ, a new creation. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 16. So now we're getting into 1 Corinthians, all right? So we're moving on. Let's, let's keep trucking, okay? Because I want, I want to see here these verses in 1 Corinthians. Uh, as we've, we've already went over these in, uh, in, in preaching and teaching and our studies there in 1 Corinthians. But notice in verse 16, 1 Corinthians 3, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. This was something that they ought to have known. This is something that God is expecting us to know. He is expecting us to know. He is expecting us not only to know it, but live like we know it. Okay? Not only know it, but live like we know it. And he says in verse 17, If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. And we talked about the, you know, we talked about the, the having a holy vessel unto the Lord. And, and that if God would destroy that temple made with hands, that temple of stone, and, and all of that that was built for his glory, that God, I mean, he would take care of this temple. If we would not take care of it, God would take care of it and destroy it. And get it out of the way so that the spirit might be saved. That means God's going to kill us if we're not, uh, if we're defiling the temple of God. I mean, that, there's no way around it. The scripture is, is very clear on it in 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians that, uh, uh, that, that God, he, he is willing to do that. You say, that's really harsh. Would God really do that? Um, would God punish a Christian who is dragging the name of Jesus Christ through the mud uh, in that way? Absolutely. And he says he has, and he says he would. Uh, he would do that. And so we, we need to be aware. What? Know ye not. You say, are, are you trying to scare me? No, God's not trying to scare us into submission. God's not trying to scare us into loving him. He just wants us to know. <laughs> he wants us to know, hey, this is what's going on. As a Christian, this is, this is serious. This is serious. And like I told somebody else uh, here recently, if Christianity and living for Jesus and, and, and being a Christian was easy, everybody would be one. Right? And, and so God, he's, he's, he's called us to a new life in Jesus Christ, which is wonderful and good. But we need to know some things. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6. 1 Corinthians 5, verse 6. And actually, just kind of dovetailing on the, the last statement there, verse number five, it says, To deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Okay, so it's not what I think or what a church says, it's what God says, all right? All right, verse number uh, six. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? And we talked about this before. That little sin has big consequences. Little sin uh, can, do a, 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 can do a great deal of damage in the life of a Christian, can do a great deal of damage in a church and for the cause of Christ. And we talked about how David and his sin... And the effect of his sin uh, had a like a ripple wave that went through his family and his sin with Bathsheba and, and, and everything uh, concerning the, the uh, killing of Uriah and all that. I mean, it just had a ripple wave of of consequence in the life of his own family and even the whole nation of Israel. And uh, sin has consequences. But here he says, your glory is not good. You know that little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven. So it's something to be purged. Know ye not. All right. Uh, chapter 6, verse number 3. Chapter 6, verse number 3. Uh, chapter 6, verse 2, actually. Chapter 6, verse 2. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, ye are unworthy to judge the smallest matters. We talked about this before. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? 
talked about how uh, in, in 1 Corinthians 6, how he was rebuking the Corinthians for taking people to court, basically other Christians, and they had lawsuits going on, and they were going before unbelievers, and, you know, they had all these quarrels and matters that uh, really were trivial to the big matter of preaching the gospel, of being the, the people of God and uh, being a, a holy people for the Lord. Uh, and that's who we are called to be. And so he's saying, you should already know this. What? Know you not. Now, 1 Corinthians 6, verse number 9. 1 Corinthians 6, verse number 9. Man, I love that, like, that sound that comes up whenever you say something cool. You know, ding! <laughs> Never mind. All right. First Corinthians six, verse number nine. Know ye not that un, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, uh, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And we, we talked about uh, you know, uh, the last time how uh, that uh, this is how the world, this is how the, the lost world is. And uh, these are the sins that the lost world is living in and living under. And uh, notice he says in verse number 11, and such were some of you. And so before Christ, B.C., you know, I mean, we have sin that uh, we have done. And, uh, you know, the uh, Corinthians, they had a bad list of, you know, bad sin. And all sin is bad. And we talked about the uh, consequences of some sins uh, are worse. Not the penalty, but the consequences, all right? The natural consequences of some sins are greater than others. But the wages of sin across the board, the wages of sin is death. So the penalty for sin, it doesn't matter if it's the smallest lie or murder, the penalty for sin with God is exactly the same. The wages of sin is death. But here he's saying uh, unto them that this, this lost world, the unrighteous, that is the unsaved, uh, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed. Thank God for that. Uh, ye are justified and, and sanctified. We talked about that the, the last time and how God has sanctified us through the Lord Jesus Christ, through the blood of Christ, justified us, made us, made us righteous. Not just taken away our sin, but made us righteous and giving, uh, given us an inheritance through Jesus Christ uh, and with him and gifted us through uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. But, but what we see here is that um, we, uh, we should know this. We should know this. What? Know you not. And notice it's not, again, it's not uh, not knowing it here, but knowing it to the point of where we, we follow it, knowing it to the point of where it changes us, knowing it to the point of where um, we allow God's word to change us and we live it we live like it first corinthians 6 verse 15 first corinthians 6 15 now know ye not that your bodies are the members of christ shall i then take the members of christ and make them the members of an harlot you say what all right and then that's that's what he says in verse 16 what god forbid what Know ye not that he was as joined to an harlot as one body? For two saith he shall be one flesh. And he's saying, don't you know this? Even the lost world knows this. And he talks about in chapter 6, verse number 1, the, the sin that Christians were uh, involved in and they were getting themselves into and they had they either had no knowledge of it because they were ignorant or... They knew it, and they were just kind of pushing it, pushing it aside. And you know what? That's what we do sometimes with the Word of God, with conviction of the Holy Spirit. We either push it aside when God is speaking to us, and when God is nailing us, we pitch it back to someone else, 
or we push it to the side and say, no, that's not for me. But you know what? God wants us to take you know, the, the Word of God seriously. And He wants us to take the commands of the Lord seriously because we're never going to grow in Christ. We're never going to uh, not only grow in Christ to uh, maturity, but to do what He's calling us to do. We're, we're going to be prohibited from doing that. Now, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19. Back to 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Okay? What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. We should know this because Jesus died for us. We've been purchased by his own blood so that we might have salvation. We are bought with a price. We know the, the, the price that was paid so that we could go to heaven. And what he's saying, you know it, but we need to live like it. We need to ap apply it to our, our life. When we make, a, a, when we make or, or we're faced rather with a choice to sin, that we need to know that we've been bought with a price. When we've been faced, when we are faced with a decision uh, uh, to go after God and follow the Lord, or we're faced with a decision to go after the world, or go after what we think is is right, or what everybody else says is is good for us, that we need to take this knowledge that we should have, that we should know that we've been bought with a price, and that Jesus Christ shed His precious blood for us. And that our life is not our own. And that uh, we don't belong to ourselves, but we belong to, to God. We belong to the Lord. So, let me sum it up. Let's wrap it up now. We're not going to go anywhere in our Christian life or Christianity unless we know these things, uh, get a grasp of these things, unless we get a grasp of uh, those things we're, that either we're ignorant of or those things that we've forgotten. You know, the, the book of 1 Peter, maybe it's 2 Peter, <laughs> he talks about calling us, calling us to remembrance. Peter called his readers, the, the, those who were receiving his letter, to remembrance. He says, I, I'm calling you to remembrance of, of those things. Now, I want you to remember a certain amount of things, okay? Things, uh, spiritual things, things of the Word of God, things that if you don't apply it to your life that you, Peter said, you're going to start living like you were before. You're going to start living like those who are lost. You're going to start doing those things which they have done or doing, and uh, you're going to, he used the word, fall from your own steadfastness. When he's talking about lose your salvation, no. He's talking about being a backslidden heathen and living like the devil and living like the world because you forget what you're, you've been bought with price. So we'll never grow spiritually to be able to do what God has called us to do. So now let's go back to the first, Romans chapter number one. What's the purpose of growing in Christ? What's the purpose of us uh, not being ignorant of the word of God? What's the purpose of us coming into the house of God and being instructed? What is all of that for? So that we... Look at me. <laughs> so, that we, so that we know how to answer the questions in, in Bible quiz, you know, so that we can raise our hands and say, I know, I know, I know. No, the, the reason why is so that we can tell somebody else in this world about Jesus Christ, so that we can be motivated to be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ, so that we can not be prohibited from serving the Lord and living for God and preaching the message of God to others because of the life that we're living. We looked here in 1 Corinthians, well, I'm sorry, we looked in Romans and 1 Corinthians and also Thessalonians about things that we really need to know that we don't need to be ignorant of because this knowledge, it, it motivates us and helps us. But here in Romans and 1 Corinthians, he's saying these things you ought to know because if we 
if we mess up here, um, it not necessarily dis disqualifies us as a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ, but our testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ, our witness for him is marred, is marred. And anybody knows that, you know, to, to be a witness as far as in a court of law, uh, a, a witness has to be credible, <laughs> right? A witness has to be credible. Well, God wants us to be credible witnesses before him. And I think that's why, and I think we heard it on, on uh, Monday night in our class, our FBI class, is that more people, more people would probably, you know, witness for the Lord Jesus Christ and tell others about the Lord Jesus and, and uh, you know, share tracts and do all this thing um, if they felt like the life that I'm living is pleasing to the Lord and I'm not a hypocrite, you know, and I'm not... You know, I'm not uh, saying one thing and doing another. And, and you know, that's, that's the truth. God doesn't want us to be saying one thing and doing another. God does not want us to be hypocrites. God does not want us to, you know, be telling everybody about how wonderful Jesus is and living like the devil. That's not God's plan. The Lord wants us to know these things. God wants us not to be ignorant. God wants us not to uh, be neglecting really what we already know. And so if we are live the life we are living is not worthy of the title Christian. If the life that we are living is not worthy of the title Christian, how are we ever going to influence anyone else to become a Christian? And so just let, let's think about through the scripture and what we've read tonight, he says to us, what? Know ye not. Know ye not these things. And Jesus, take, just take it back, uh, you know, to, to what Jesus' words were. Um, and I'm kind of taking it out of context. But, but Jesus said, if you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. All right? It's totally out of context. But... <laughs> One thing that we know is, is when we understand the Word of God, when we understand what God wants us to do and be as a Christian and we're doing it, brings us joy, brings us happiness to know, you know what, my Heavenly Father, uh, he, He's pleased. My Heavenly Father is pleased, not, not with me. And, and you know, as, as a Christian, it's not about our performance. It's not about what we do. It's, it's really about what He's done. But like I said, being a, a Christian or a child of God, we're, we're called into a new life. We're, I mean, you look into the Bible, we're called to be soldiers for Jesus Christ. Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And if being a Christian was easy, everybody would be one. Everybody would be one. And uh, we, we want everybody to be saved. We want everybody to know the Lord Jesus Christ. But uh, th this life uh, as, a, as, as a believer is wonderful. The life as a believer is glorious. Why? Because we're on our way to heaven. Those who are saved, we're on our way to heaven. Our sins are forgiven. We have a relationship with the God who created us. We can, we can pray and God hears us and we can know that. And that, that God will answer our requests and we can we can tell others about him. And, and there's so many more things that, uh, that, that are, are benefits and blessings of salvation. But what we really need to understand is that if we are ignorant of some things or we have neglected some things, we're not going to be able to do what God has called us to do. And so that's...